Hello there, my friends. Welcome to the worship channel of the First Presbyterian Church of Coal Valley and the Beulah Presbyterian Church of Orion. This is the midweek meditation for the week of June 23rd, 2021. As you know, we continue our journey through the book of Exodus. Today, chapter 48, where Jacob meets Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of your love and ask that you might uh, grace us with wisdom as we hear the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. As usual, you'll have to read the whole chapter to get the full benefit of this message. Uh, but hear the word of the Lord from the first portion of Genesis 48. Sometime later, Joseph was told, Your father is ill. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, along with him. When Jacob was told, Your son Joseph has come to you, Israel rallied all of his strength and sat up on the bed. Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan. And there he blessed me and said to me, I am going to make you fruitful and will increase your numbers. I will make you a community of peoples and I will give you this land as an everlasting possession to your descendants after you. Now then, your two sons born to you in Egypt before I came to you here will be reckoned as mine. Ephraim and Manasseh will be mine, just as Reuben and Simeon are mine. Any children born to you after them will be yours. In the territory they inherit, they will be reckoned under the, name, the names of their brothers. As I was returning from Paddan, to my sorrow, Rachel died in the land of Canaan while we were still on the way, a little distance from Ephrath. So I buried her there, beside the road to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. When Israel saw the sons of Joseph, he asked, Who are these? They are the sons God has given me here, Joseph said to his father. Then Israel said, Bring them to me, so I may bless them. Now Israel's eyes were failing because of old age, and he could hardly see. So Joseph brought his sons close to him, and his father kissed them and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see your face again, and now God has allowed me to see your children too. Then Joseph removed them from Israel's knees and bowed down with his face to the ground. And Joseph took both of them, Ephraim on his right toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh on his left toward Israel's right hand, and brought them close to him. But Israel reached out his right hand and put it on Ephraim's head, though he was the younger. And crossing his arms, he put his left hand on Manasseh's head, even though Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has delivered me from all harm, may he bless these boys. May they be called my name and the names of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and may they increase greatly upon the earth. When Joseph saw his father placing his right hand on Ephraim's head, he was displeased, and he took hold of his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to him, No, my father this one is firstborn. Put your right hand on, this, on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He too will become a person and 
a people, and he too will become great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his descendants will become a group of nations. He blessed them that day and said, In your name will Israel pronounce this blessing. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. And then Israel said to Joseph, I'm about to die, but God will be with you and take you back to the land of your fathers. And to you, as one who is over your brothers, I will give the ridge of land I took from the Amorites with my sword and my bow. Here ends this blessed reading coming today from the whole chapter of 48 Genesis. Let's bow our heads in prayer. We give you thanks and ask that your blessing might accompany us with every step of faith that we take. Shine a light on our path this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you may remember from last week, we said that Jacob came to the place where he acknowledged that he was toward the end of his years. And at the end of our meditation last week, I said that Jacob still had some important work to do. Well, in this passage, uh, he is going to do that important work. At the end of the passage last week, Jacob's age is mentioned as 130 years old. In this passage, he is even closer to the time of death. He is in his 140s, and the time of his death was 147. The passage we have shared today takes place, as the scripture says, sometime later. And that ends up being 15 to 17 years later. Joseph is informed that his father's health is not very good. And so as a response, Joseph goes to his father. And he takes his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him. And together they go and visit Joseph's aging father. And when Jacob was told that his son Joseph was coming to see him, he rallied all of his strength and sat up on the side of the bed. And that gives us a picture of Jacob not being very far from his death because he had to rally all of his strength even to set up on the side of the bed. And in his dying days, like I said before, God still had some work for him to accomplish before he took his last breath. And the work that Jacob had to do was all about making his sons clear about the family lineage, about this promise that God had given him. Jacob had received a directive from God as to how the lineage of his chosen people was going to work out. Now, ordinarily, the firstborn, which was Reuben, would be the heir, plain and simple. But it was not that simple for a couple of reasons. First, Joseph had always been Jacob's favorite since he was born. And also, we think about this. Joseph was the first child born between Rachel and Jacob. And it seems reasonable to believe that Rachel was the woman chosen by God for Jacob. And so it also then seems reasonable, reasonable that Joseph might be the first in line to be the heir to God's promise. Just like Abraham and Sarah were the chosen couple, in this line of succession, Rachel and Jacob were the chosen couple. And so their firstborn was the one chosen by God to lead God's chosen people. Remember, Leah was only married to Jacob because of uh, a trick played on him by his uncle Laban. He tricked him into marrying Leah first. But clearly, Jacob loved Rachel. And I'm convinced if it wasn't for Laban's trickery, Rachel would have been Jacob's only 
wife. Remember, the other wives came along only because Rachel and Leah were having a battle about who could provide Jacob with the most sons. Anyway, God, through the voice of Jacob, was now making it clear that the firstborn of Rachel and Jacob, Joseph, was the first in line with respect to the promise that God had made to Abraham many, many years ago. You may remember back in chapter 35 of Genesis, we covered this. Reuben, Jacob's oldest son, tried to use a pagan ritual to claim the firstborn position, to, to claim his right to be heir by sleeping with his father's concubines in order to claim his inheritance as the firstborn. Well, apparently God was not impressed with that strategy, and apparently nor was Jacob. Because here we are now, Reuben is out and Joseph is in. And so, it is now Joseph that is entitled to a double inheritance, which was what the firstborn always received, not Reuben. Just to make things a little bit more complicated, that double inheritance isn't going to go to Joseph. It's going to go to Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And that is exactly what this little gathering between Jacob and Manasseh and Ephraim and Joseph is all about. So, we think about the 12 tribes of Israel. They're a little bit different than the list of just Jacob's 12 sons. Surprisingly, Joseph's name is not on the list of the 12 tribes of Israel, but rather his two sons are on the list. The eldest, or in this case, the one chosen by God, Joseph, to be first in line, always received a double portion of the inheritance. And that double portion, according to God's plan, will be received by Joseph's two sons, born to him in Egypt, Manasseh and Ephraim. Now, to continue along this line of the tribes of Israel, Simeon and Judah are put upon to share a tribal allotment that bears the name of Judah. And the descendants of Levi are priests, and so they are given a number of cities scattered over the land of Israel. So even though the Levites don't have a designated large territory, they are still considered one of the tribes of Israel. So, given these adjustments to the list of the tribes of Israel, the final list of the tribes of Israel looks like this. Ephraim, Manasseh, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Reuben, and Benjamin. The sons of Jacob that are not on this list of the tribes are Simeon, who is uh, sharing a tribe with Judah, and Joseph, whose double portion is split between his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. The blessing of Manasseh and Ephraim, Joseph's sons, is one of those tasks that Jacob was challenged to complete before the time when he took his last breath. Jacob explains to Joseph in this passage, chapter 48, that God came to him a long time ago and proclaimed that all of the descendants of Abraham would be many and that they would be heir to this promise that God gave to Abraham. And that promise would make all the descendants of Abraham God's chosen people. And Jacob believes that it is God's will for his son Joseph to be the first in line of his offspring. And so, 
Jacob blesses Joseph in this passage and says to Joseph, Hey, I never expected to even see you again, and now God has allowed me to meet your children too. He's feeling really blessed by that occasion. So he says to Joseph, May the God before whom my father Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd for my whole life right on to this day, the angel who has delivered me from all of the harm, may he bless these boys. May they be called by my name and become of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. And may they increase greatly upon the earth. And then Jacob proclaimed that Manasseh and Ephraim were now adopted by Jacob. And so each one of them are in line to receive a portion of Jacob's inheritance, equal to that of all of his other sons. And then Jacob explains to Joseph about his beloved Rachel. And he's reminiscing a little bit about his beloved Rachel and how she died along the road near Bethlehem. And that Rachel, who is Joseph's mother, and Manasseh and Ephraim's grandmother, is buried there in Bethlehem, and how he loved her and remembers her so fondly. So on the heels of that story about Rachel, Jacob brings Manasseh and Ephraim close to him, and he prepares to impart his, or rather impart God's blessing upon each of his grandchildren who he has now adopted. Since Jacob can barely see, Joseph directs Manasseh to the right hand of Jacob because he's the oldest and he should receive the rightful blessing of the firstborn. And then Ephraim is guided toward Jacob's left hand, since Ephraim is the second born to Joseph. But Jacob reaches his left hand out and places it upon Manasseh, the oldest. And then he crosses his right hand over in order to place his right hand on Ephraim. Now, Joseph notices this. He sees what Jacob is doing, and he thinks maybe the old man is just confused. He tries to correct his aging father. But Jacob explains, I know what I'm doing. The scripture says that Jacob refused. He said to Joseph that he was well aware that Manasseh was the oldest of these two boys. And he said, Manasseh will indeed receive my blessing and will become a great nation, but Ephraim will be greater. And so Jacob is prophesying what's going to happen in the future. And so at that point, Jacob blessed his grandchildren in the way that he believed God was calling him to do. Ephraim would be the first in line followed by Manasseh, taking the place of Reuben, who lost his number one spot many years ago by being too eager to receive it. And then Jacob says to Joseph, I'm about to die, but God will be with you. God will take you back to the land of Canaan, the land of our fathers, and to you, as the one who is over all of your brothers, I give the ridge of land that I took from the Amorites with my sword and my bow. Jacob is telling Joseph, I am putting you in charge. You are now the patriarch of the descendants of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. You are the patriarch of God's chosen people. And the people who proceed from Joseph and all of his brothers will one day be taken back to the land of Canaan and will be the instrument of God's wonderful promise that he made to Abraham so many years ago. The promise that in that holy land, 
the people of God, the chosen people of God, will dwell. Now, perhaps Jacob envisioned that all of this would take place in Joseph's generation and not 400 years down the road. But this prophecy is God's word and will be fulfilled in God's time. And that's just about all that chapter 48 has to say. And Jacob, though, had one more task to accomplish. And that task will be the subject matter of our conversation next week in chapter 49. But for now, let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of your love, for the light that you shine upon our path when we hear the word of the Lord. We give you thanks and we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.